Turn in your Bibles this morning to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. We started this last week talking about something. Um, if you'll just uh, maybe click in your device, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. I love this, um, really kind of this uh, conversation that Paul's having with Timothy, but also this great principles about God's call to ministry. We talked a little bit about it last week. I want to bring out a point this week about this. And and really just how that the Lord really is looking for us to step in to the call that He has for us in our lives. And, and as we said last week, really our call, the, uh, the, the call to ministry, the heart of ministry, is really a call to worship. How many believe that God called you to worship Him long before He called you to go across the waters, amen, or wherever? He says, that, I mean, this is the greatest call that we can minister to the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, this is something that Paul is going into. He's talking about the Lord, <clears throat> how wonderful the Lord is. And he says, Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Don't you love that? Amen. Aren't you glad that before you were born, God knew you? Amen. He called you, amen, and, and gave you a purpose and gave you a ministry. But I do believe that there's really kind of two people that I see in the church today, that those that are kind of pursuing their personal ministry and those who are just following a ministry. But I do believe that the Lord wants all of us to step into the ministry that has for each of us and that we fulfill the mission of Jesus together. How many believe that? Amen. I love that this uh, quote that I've been saying for really uh, the last two years that really we've perfected the ministry uh, of church but not the mission of Jesus. And I believe that it's time that we kind of perfect the mission of Jesus. Can you say amen? And the only way that we're going to do that is really the church being the church. And I've heard that more and more more and more recently that really how that we really just need to be the church. Amen. Aren't you glad that God's coming back for a glorious church? Amen. Without spot or wrinkle. Amen. Not a sickly church, not a weak church, but a strong church. And so we've got to understand that God wants us to step into the ministry that he has for each and every one of us. And so really it's important to understand that his purpose is, is that everyone becomes useful and fruitful. That's really God's purpose for our lives. He didn't just call you to, to be a bump on a dill pickle and waste space and oxygen. He's called you with a purpose. The Bible says it's a holy calling. It's a heavenly calling, and it's a calling, a high calling, as Paul said, that we have in Christ Jesus. How many believe that? Amen. How many believe that God's called you to the ministry? Come on. Everybody should have their hand up. Amen. And so we believe that. But one of the things we talked about last week is that call to worship the Lord and that realization that the Lord has called us to, to fellowship. And so um, just quickly that, uh, to go over this, because I do have a point, point. Um, and, and one of the things that I love that, that Peter brought out, about the call of God. I want to bring that out today. But really, we talk about the call to fellowship, the call to worship the Lord. And really, no matter what particular ministry you're in or what God's called you to ultimately, this is always the anchor point, isn't it? Is this relationship with the Lord, this fellowship with the Lord. The Bible says that we've been made spiritual kings and priests to offer spiritual sacrifices before the Lord. All the sacrifices we saw in the Old Testament, all those pictures of worship, how many know God still wants us to do that? Is that right? And that's just a picture of how we are to minister to the Lord. One of my first ministries is not to the world, it's to the Lord. <laughs> Did you know that, that a call to ministry is a call to minister to the Lord? It's called a walk with the Lord every day in fellowship, to follow Jesus in discipleship and and uh, how many know that when Jesus was on the earth, he gave us that example? And the 12 apostles gave us that example of what it means to follow Jesus. And, and that's really the call to ministry to begin with. is, And that's the heart of ministry is to follow Jesus. How many are saying, man, I'm just really having an amazing time following Jesus? Amen? I mean, you know, it's a journey, it's a trip, it's, a, it's an amazing time that we have in our lives. But I believe that as we're really following the Lord, there's so many things that we could say that, that really have to do with following Jesus. And I want to move quickly through this, and that is really just walking with Jesus every day. That means making the Lord a part of your life every single day. And practicing His teachings. That's what Jesus commanded us. Man, if you just practice what I said until I come back, then you'll be good to go, right? And so that's what we need to do, practice his teachings. And remembering his death, that's part of following Jesus, isn't it? Many people say, well, I do communion every once a year at Christmas or Easter or once a month we do it at our church. But how many know remembering the Lord's death goes way beyond just a communion service? 
right? As Paul said, I carry the marks of Jesus in my body. I remember that every day. When you remember what Jesus did for you every day, it really brings a heart of gratitude, and, and, and that's what grace is all about, graciousness and gratitude, right? Amen. And you begin to remember what the Lord did for you, and if you remember what Jesus did for you on a daily basis, I believe it's going to change your outlook on life. Amen. Amen. How many know the devil can't touch a grateful person? Can't touch a thankful person. Amen. And so we remember his death as followers of Jesus. And we, we preach his gospel. It's not our message. It's his gospel. It's his mission we walk in. And we endure pure persecution for his namesake. But you can't talk about the call that God has on your life or the ministry that God calls us to without talking about loving people. How many know the heart of ministry is about loving people? Jesus didn't lay his life down for a ministry. He laid his life down for people. <laughs> Amen. Right? Amen. And, and people aren't objects or projects. They're subjects. They're, God, this is, what, this is what it's all about. And so we're never going to get to a place where God's called you to a ministry and, and uh, I really don't care about people. <laughs> I don't like people. How I many you know that's just not ministry? God's heart is people. God's, God just looks at people and says, this is why I called you to the ministry. I didn't call you to show off or be a better than any other Christians, but I called you to love other people and show my power and my love to the world. Amen. And so Jesus laid his life down for, amen, the world. And I, I believe that. And so I believe that some people get caught up in that romantic kind of idea and, and idea of uh, perspective of ministry. And they miss the reality of ministry, which is people. I mean, no, Jesus died for people. And he didn't die for clean cut, already good Christians. He died for those of us who are broken, those who are lost. He died for people that are in sin. Aren't you glad that Jesus came to die for our sin? Amen. And, and set us free from that. And so that's what it's about. It's about loving people. And I just wanted to mention that. And we'll talk about that perhaps at another time. But 1 Corinthians 13, uh, we call it the love chapter. It's one of the great things about Paul's teaching on the gifts of the Spirit, not only in our lives and in the church, but right there in the middle in 1 Corinthians 13, he says that the summary of the things he was talking about, about love, was you can have a great ministry but not love people. You can have great gifts, but not love. You can have great works, but not love. But how many know the greatest thing is love, the love for people? Amen? Jesus was moved with compassion, and he healed the multitudes, the Bible says. But the third thing I just want to mention and I want to focus on today is about this call to ministry, the, uh, God's call to ministry, and really the heart of ministry is living the life. How many know we need Christians to live the life today? We don't need people that just talk about it. We need people to do it. I mean, how many know Christianity isn't just about, amen, a label. It is about a practice. It is about a life, that we live a life, that we live an example. We live our, we, out loud, amen. And how many love isn't just something you say. Love is something you do. You see it in action. Well, it's the same thing with living the life. And so I want to encourage you today to live the life. This is what ministry really is all about. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, I want to look at this for a little bit, break it down, maybe look at some translations, and just kind of talk about living the life. Amen. How many believe that uh, ministry is about living the life? Amen. And when God calls you to ministry, He doesn't just call you to worship, He doesn't call you to fellowship and loving other people, but He calls you to live the life. Someone said, well, you know, God loves me so much, and, and God will never stop loving me. No matter what I do, God will always love me. That is true, but there is also another uh, law, if you will, in, in the kingdom, and that is you just can't live any old way you want to. You have to live the life. You have to walk by faith. You can't just walk by your feelings and, and the senses and, and by the culture, amen? But you've got to walk according to his principles. I mean, when you gave your life to Jesus, you found out it was his way and his word, amen? That's what was important, his way, the way God wanted me to do it. And so that's what's important about living the life. Someone said, well, I, I believe that I can do what I want and, 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 and it will be okay. I'm not going to hurt anybody. But how many know when you live the way you want to, the way we feel to do, however we want to, come on, that's dysfunctional when it comes to other people. It's going to lead to brokenness in other, other relationships. You just can't live any old way you want to. Is that true? You've got to live the life. How many know God is calling Christians today to live the life? God's calling young people to live the life, not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. Amen. Let me just bring out some things about this scripture. Encourage you today to live the life. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, he's concluding on a thought. I'll share that in a little bit, but it, and to share that thought would take a long time. But he says this: He says, Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, or make your calling and election 
sure. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. If you look at 1 Peter chapter 1, he goes in and begins to talk about these qualities that God has given us through his son Jesus and the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. He said that he gave us these, these things and he gave us gifts and promises. How many know God's promises are yes and amen? Amen? Right? And so he gave us these promises, gave us these things, and he said that we need to diligently add to your faith these God-like qualities. And he begins to name a few. And then he says these qualities that they'll make you useful and fruitful, not short-sighted or forgetful. These are good qualities. These are qualities that you need to add to your faith. And then he goes on to say that we need to be diligent to make your calling an election, an election firm. We talked about how God called you and chose you from the foundation of the world last week. Well, you've got to confirm that. You've got to endorse that by living right. Come on, somebody. Amen. You've got to live the, the life. And so by living the life and living these qualities out, he says, that you're going to make sure that you confirm your calling and election from God. Someone goes around and says, well, I've been called by God. I've been chosen by God. Well, someone also says, you've got to show it. <laughs> Paul is saying here, you've got to show, show it. You've got to confirm that you have been called by God. You've got to live a life of these qualities, God-like qualities that confirm that, yes, I have been called by God, and yes, I have been chosen by God. Amen? Come on, how many know it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to do it? Amen. In verse 10, some of the, the translations that break this down say, you must do all you can to show God that He has really chosen you and selected you. Everything you can do. Set your minds that you... Uh, on, on endorsing by your conduct the fact that God called you and chose you. Work hard to prove that God has called you and claimed you. Confirm God's invitation to you, His choice of you. So you've got to live a life. How many know it's important to live the life? Amen? So we've got to live the life of this ministry that God's called us to. It's not just one thing to go around among church members and say, look, I've been called to an awesome ministry. I mean, God's, you know, really put his hand on my life from before I was born, you know, and, and I, I'm just going to do my own thing, and I'm just going to go my own way, and I'm just going to kind of seek out my own ministry. How many know, amen, we need to say, listen, I need to live a life that confirms God's choosing, God's calling on my life. And we need to see Christians today live the life. And I believe that there are, as so many Christians I see in my life, have just been such a tremendous example that they live the life outside these four walls. They actually love other people. They actually are generous. They actually uh, go, uh, are, are preaching the gospel in, in what they say and what they do. That's been a tremendous example to me. Amen. And so I just want to encourage you to be that type of Christian today, that I'm going to live the life. I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm not just going to go around saying I've got a call of God on my life and I've been chosen and then let that sit on a shelf, I'm going to show, amen, my neighbors and my friends and my family that, yeah, God did really call me. I'm going to live the life that, that the Bible says is worthy of the calling. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, the second thought that Paul brings out here that is really uh, like this. He says, so I, the prisoner of the Lord, in verse 1, appeal to you to live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So in other words, as high the calling is, that's how high the standard of living you need to live. That's what he's saying. That you live a life wor worthy of the calling. That is, to live a life that exhibits godly character, moral courage, personal integrity, mature behavior, a life that expresses gratitude towards God your salvation. You need to lead a life, live the life, or walk in this life with a behavior that is a credit to the summons of God's service. That's amazing, isn't it? Think about it. If you said, well, God's call on my life is so strong, so great, so high, so holy, as we see in 2 Timothy, then how many know that's what kind of life we should be living? He calls us to that lifestyle. He empowers us to that lifestyle. He doesn't just say, you know what, uh, once you're born again, good luck, you're on your own. Find your way through this thing, and I'll see you at the end. How many know that's not what God says? He says, I'm going to empower you to live this life. I'm going to give you my word, but it's up to you to live the life. You've got to live worthy of this calling. Wow, that's pretty incredible, isn't it? That the world can actually look and say, listen, we, we don't like what we see because you don't live the life outside of church. We don't like what we hear from you. We don't like what we are, you're being displayed on social media because it really doesn't reflect the calling that you said that God's called you to. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? That's pretty insignificant when we think about it, how important that is. That's why the Bible says that we need to live soberly in this present day and age. So I just want to give you three things that it looks like. What does it look like to live this life? Number one, I believe that you need to take initiative. 
Amen? Take initiative. You take the steps. You make the changes. You work it out, your salvation out for yourself, the Bible says. You need to take initiative. That's what it looks like to live the life. Take the initiative. Don't wait for other people to, to lead the life for you and do everything for you. And if you're a teenager, don't wait for your parents to say, you know what, my parents are saved and they're Christians. And, and, but, you know, come on, you need to live the life. You've got to take the initiative. You've got to make the step towards the Lord. You've got to, to open up this book. Someone said, well, God isn't speaking to me. Well, probably because you're not opening the book. <laughs> Amen? Probably because you're not in the Word. Probably because things aren't happening. Maybe because you're not really taking the steps that God's asking you to take. How many it's important to take the initiative, right? And so it's just not that label of Christianity. It's the practice of Christianity. In verse 10 of, of 2 Peter, he, he says, Be all the more diligent to confirm your calling. That word there he uses twice. It means to, to, use, to make every effort, to, to use uh, this endeavor, this eagerness, this earnestness to labor and to study. This is what he's talking about, that you need to really be diligent to add to your faith. You need to take this diligent and take this seriously and confirm your calling in your election. If you've been called by God, that you need to really confirm this and work hard at it. Think about it. You need to show eagerness and be earnest about it. Be passionate and be consistent about it. That's what he's saying. Take the initiative. And so be diligent to add to your faith goodness and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and, and godliness and brotherly kindness and love. Take initiative to do that. Don't wait for your pastor to tell you. Don't wait for God to, you know, things to be so uh, messed up in your life that you have to do something. Take initiative to do it. Take that step right now, today. Come on. Take initiative, amen, to live the life. And then the second thing he really brings clear is that we need to take responsibility. I mean, it's important that we take responsibility. I believe that this is a good message to this generation. You need to take responsibility for your actions. Uh-oh. I, I thought I would get a better amen from the older generation, but you need to take responsibility. You, you've got you've to, you know, this is the first move towards God in our lives. It's called repentance. When we come to the Lord and we realize what Jesus did for us at Calvary and we realize that we're sinners, come on, and we can't save ourselves, we can't do anything to save ourselves, it's only by His grace, come on, only by His blood. And when we take that first step, the first movement towards God is taking responsibility for our actions. Lord, it's me, I'm the one. I'm, I'm the one that's lost, I'm the one that's in sin, I'm the one that disobeyed, I'm the one that broke the law. Come on, somebody. How many know Jesus was innocent when he died, but he died for a bunch of criminals? That's us. Someone said, well, I was innocent. No, Jesus was the only one innocent. Jesus died for the guilty, didn't he? He died a murderer's death, amen, but he was innocent for those who were guilty who play innocent. Come on, that's us. And sometimes we feel like, amen, we, we, we need to take responsibility for our actions. And so the grace of God really doesn't relieve us from our responsibility to live the life. Thank God for the grace of God. Thank God for God has just so much mercy and so much love for us. But how many know it doesn't relieve me from my responsibilities? Amen. I, I still need to be a dad. I still need to be a husband. I still need to be a Christian. I need, need to live the life. Is that right? Amen. And so it's in my actions and my care for other people and my response and, and all those things I need to take responsibility. This is what Paul is trying to convey this message that we really need to give diligence and give, give kind of like this serious, eager, and, and earnestness to this practice of living the life, taking responsibility. Amen. And when I take responsibility, I'm the one that I realize that I need to seek the Lord, that I'm the one that needs to pray. I'm the one that needs to move towards God. Amen. I'm the one that needs to take that step. I'm taking responsibility. And third thing, lastly, is taking precaution, is that we need to live informed. He said that you need to live diligently, but also twice, he says, in the knowledge. You know, you know really, it's, it's really kind of informing yourself. Stay aware. Don't be ignorant. So we live informed, we live soberly, we stay awake, we stay alert. We don't live reckless. This was the Bible teaches that to, when we live the life, we aren't to live recklessly. We are to live soberly in this present age, the Bible says. That's genuinely and seriously and, and with sincerity. That's what it means. Amen. How many know when you live the life, it means, as a Christian, it means you are living it for real. You're not just putting on a show, this is real. This is, this is who you are. Come on, somebody. Amen. This is who you are. So you live and you take precaution and you live 
uh, useful and fruitful, the Bible says. Notice what he says is that if you put these qualities in your life and you practice these things, if you live the life of the call of God, that God is on your life, and what God is asking you to do, he said this, you're not going to be short-sighted and forgetful. You're not going to forget what the Lord has done. You're not going to live a life that's just so flamboyant. That uh, You know what? Hey, I'm, I know God's forgiven me, but I'm going to do what I want to do because God will forgive me anyway. So I mean, you know, that's, the Bible says short-sighted, and that is forgetful. That's not being useful. That's being fruitful. And the Bible says that we, if we forget where we've come from, if we forget what God has done, we'll become short-sighted. In other words, we can't see what God has done, and we can't see what God will do and has been doing, right? That's what it means. So we take precaution. And I love at the very end of, of this uh, exhortation and this, this principle here, he says this. He says, if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. I love that. Isn't that a great promise? You're never going to fail. You're never going to fall. And you're not going to, not, not, not that you're gonna, not going to have struggles or have problems, but he said you're not going to fall. You're not going to come to a place where you're absolutely uh, downtrodden, where you're absolutely defeated. How many know we're not defeated in Jesus? In Romans chapter 7, Paul said, look, I've got all these things. I've got this tug of war going in my life. I mean, I'm, I'm doing things that I know I don't want to do, but I know I should do. But at the very end, he says, thanks be to God who always gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. So I love that at the very end. He says, if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. So how many today want to say, you know, I want to walk in the call of God. And it's not just some ministry, some big high-end ministry that I'm thinking about, but it is just really walking in fellowship and loving others and really just living the life. How many just raise your hand to heaven and say, man, I want to live the life today. I want to live that life that, that Christ is calling me to, that I have been called and chosen before the foundation of the world. And I believe that I want to walk worthy of that calling. Amen? Can we stand on our feet today? Amen. Today I want to take a few moments and, and, and just I just shared a little bit, but at the end of our services we, we have an altar ministry that comes down and we want to just open the altar to pray for people that especially if you're really having sick in your body, we want to do that. But today I, I don't know about you, but I just felt like there's so many people here today or maybe listening online that you just need the refreshing of the Lord. You just need to come to a place where you just need, you know, something in your life that said, Lord, I just feel like I'm so busy. I, I, I just feel like I, I just need to come back to church. I need to do this. I need to do that. And, you know, when we realize, when we come into the rest of the Lord, it really just, that means that scripture that Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Take my burden. It's light and it's easy. Coming into the rest of the Lord is just receiving what God is doing in your life and just saying, Lord, I want just a little bit more of the Holy Spirit today. I just want a little bit more of your spirit flowing in my life. Maybe it's been too much about me. Maybe it's been a little bit too much of my effort. Maybe it's been a little bit too much of my work. Come on. I don't know about you, but sometimes you just need to kind of just stop a little bit and say, Lord, I need refresh in my spirit. Is anybody here today who said, well, I just need the refreshing of the Lord to wash over me today. And my home's been crazy and just my family's been crazy. And I barely saw my husband or wife this week and my kids. And I just feel like I'm so caught up with life. And I don't know about you, but God wants you to come into the rest today. Amen. And so as we pray and, and we close this end of the part of the service, we just want to let you know that God really wants to bring a refreshing in your life and a strength and a grace in your life that you can do what God's called you to do. Amen? Come on. Amen? Come on. I mean, no, you, you don't need to lose your mind. God's got this. Amen? God's got the things in your life. God's, God's, God's got it under control. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's pray today and let's just ask the Lord, amen, first of all, to seal this word and then second of all, to bring refreshing. Father, we just thank you so much, amen, for the, the way that you move in our hearts, the way that you speak through your word, Lord. And though uh, I was speaking, I know that you were speaking through your word. Lord, the call that you have on each and every one of our lives, Lord, sometimes we don't even know what it is, but we can start right here. We can start with fellowship with you. We can start with ministering to you in prayer and in worship, Lord. We can start by just pouring our heart out before you, God. That's how we can start just this ministry that you called us to, Lord. But Lord, I pray that you would do something in our hearts and maybe you're listening today and you're not living the life and you're not really walking according to the call of God and, and, the, and that really that kind of standard that the Lord is calling you to. I want you to come back and say, Lord, I, I really just, I apologize and repent, Lord, for saying I'm doing, I'm doing it my way and I'm doing it wrong. So I just want to say, Lord, I want to come back to living the life. 
I haven't really been a witness in, in front of my neighbors and my family the way I should. I, there's things I've said online that probably I, I, I don't need to be saying, Lord. I want to live the life that reflects the choosing of the Lord, the selection of God in my life, and to let people know that I am the chosen generation without pride in my heart. But Lord, I just come back to you today. So that's you today. Just say, Lord, I come back to living the life. And Lord, we just pray for refreshing today. For those of the, that are here this morning that absolutely need you to touch them in their inner man, as Paul said. The inner strength, Lord, that strength of just, sometimes we just get so weary. And we know that waiting on you live, gives us strength. But God, we just pray today that you would just touch us. And if you need that touch today, I pray you just lift up your hand and say, I need that refreshing from the Lord today in my heart. I need it in my spirit, just that strength and that, that grace that kind of, as Paul went through that difficult situation, he said, Lord, your grace is sufficient. That's what I need to walk in today. Lord, help me walk in that strength, walk in that grace, walk in that refreshing. Lord, today, I just receive it in my spirit today. I receive it in my home and over my kids and my family, my marriage or whoever, Lord, my family members. I just receive it today. I've been so stressed out, Lord, and, and it's been crazy, but Lord, I receive your refreshing today. Thank you, Lord, that you are empowering me to live the life. And I just want to follow your steps. I want to follow where you're going, Lord. Let me follow the Holy Ghost today. And the Holy Spirit speaking expressively to Go where you're going, Lord. That's where I want to go today. And I just pray, Lord, just help me be a witness to my family, to this community, that, Lord, people be drawn to you who need you so much. I just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Can we give the Lord a cheer today? Amen. What's up, fam? This is Michael. Thank you for joining us. If you love what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button, the subscribe button, then the bell notification with all the notifications on so that you can be informed on every time we post new content. If the Lord's placed it on your heart to give, you'll find that link down in the description below. Don't forget to follow us on all of our other social media platforms so that you can be up to date on everything we're doing here at River Valley Church. Most of all, if you need someone to stand with you in prayer, click the link to our website, you'll find contact information. We wanna get you in contact with prayer warriors who are gonna stand with you in your time of need. Thank you for joining us today. We love you, we appreciate you, and we'll see you next time. God bless.